Govi have just released their new and upgraded Neon Rope Light 2. And I'm actually kind of excited about these because they finally bring shape mapping into the mix. This means that we aren't stuck with the regular sequential linear style effects that sends colors from a start of the strip to the end of a strip. And instead we can fully map a shape so that it can have directional effects and treats the entire shape as a whole, as you can see from the bands of color that are falling down the shape in line. Now you might be wondering why the shape we've created looks like a child's drawing of the Batman logo. Well, I'm going to blame Ryan for that one. Ryan is the man behind the scenes, often assembling half the desks and chairs and other kit that we get into review. So naturally, I tasked him with creating me a sign that uses the Govi Neon Rope 2 lights. Well, originally, I asked him to do me a horrendously garish live, love, laugh sign. But after realizing that was probably a smidgen too complicated for his lack of artistic talent, we went with something a little bit simpler. I'm Batman. How do you think he did? Tell him in the comments and give him a mark out of 10. But I think it's good enough to at least show you how these new lights work starting with the installation process, which is slightly upgraded. It's pretty simplistic as well, although it can be a bit fiddly. All you have to do is mount the small clips to the wall in a rough shape that you want. Now, working out how to translate the shape onto the wall is possibly the most complicated part of the entire process, especially if you go for a custom design like I have. Now, thankfully, Govi have a bunch of guides within the app for a ton of different shapes. And when you pick a shape, there's a fun animation to show you what it might look like on the wall. This is a really nice touch from Govi and helps with the inspiration for what you could possibly do with your own. There's also another tab which shows some further inspiration on how this can be used to create works of light art in your house. And to be honest, I actually really like some of the ideas. I've got my own idea of what I'd like to do next, but I'll come back to that shortly. Now, once you've set up your pattern and assembled the neon rope onto the clips, Govi have added this really simple way of scanning the shape you've made using the camera on your phone. It will display a pattern on the lights to help trace the shape that you've made. And then in theory, you should be done. But for whatever reason, I couldn't get the app to recognize Ryan's wish.com version of the Batman logo. It just kept on coming up with an error. Why is it working? Why is it working? Justice. Hard to say exactly what was causing it, but I think it might have been our fault by making the shape come together with two parts almost touching at the very bottom. I think it kind of made it a bit confused, but either way, whose fault it was is not the point. Govi have already thought of this and have provided a solution for those that encounter a similar problem. On the next page, it will show you the shape it thinks it captured, and then it will allow you to draw over it to confirm the shape is correct, and that's it, you're good to go. It was a little bit fiddly to try and trace this on my tiny phone mind. It would have been good if perhaps they'd included some sort of tool to lock your drawing to the lines that it worked out itself, or some other solution for sausage-fingered people like myself. But once you are set up, you'll now notice that in the typical Govi scenes that you've seen on my other Govi episodes, some of them now have additional controls, giving you direction of movement for the lighting effects. Pressing these arrows, it changes how the colors wipe across the image you've made, and there's even a setting to have it originate in the center as well, which ends up being quite hypnotic. Like all other Govi lighting, there's so many different scenes that you can choose from to match all different moods. Like I said though, I've covered these a lot in my other Govi episodes, so I don't want to delve into this too much. You can always check those out yourself, and I'll link those below. But although not all of the scenes support the shape calibration, most of them do. But if that isn't good enough, the customization is superbly robust, just like all other Govi products. What's quite fun here though is that the shape that you drew earlier actually appears within the app, which you can then color in, choosing different colors for every single segment if you wanted to, as well as adding lighting effects to the color you choose. What I wasn't expecting was the ability to actually turn certain segments off, and had I realized that before I assembled it, I might have actually given the live, love, laugh sign a go, as we could have separated the words by turning off the small segments in between. 
I really like this feature because it allows for more customization options and flexibility with how you use the Neon Rope Light 2 to create images that wouldn't look right with one continuous line. Oh, and there's one other new customization option which Goyo introduced, and that's using their new lighting bot. In other words, AI. I'm not really sure why companies keep adding AI into their products. It's not really necessary. But that said, it does offer an interesting way at least to sort of randomize the color and scene based on what you ask it. And it can kind of advise you on what it thinks is the best. I'm feeling sad. Okay. Okay. I want to feel calm and collected. It's like kind of like an off whitey type thing. I'm in the mood for drinking lots of whiskey. <gasps> they spelt whiskey wrong. They spelt it with an E. Disappointed. Disappointed, but let's see what that looks like. Ooh. That is good whiskey lighting. It's got a slight movement as well. That's quite nice. All right, let's try one more. It's time to party. Ooh. I mean, look, it does work. It, you can't argue that that doesn't work. I'm not sure how often I'll use it, but it does work. Anyway, if we ignore the shoehorned AI, I've got to say that Govi Neon Rope Lights 2 look stunning and actually really on trend right now. You only have to watch some of these DIY programs to see what I mean. There's always a neon design on the wall in a form of motif knocking around in the final build. I've even had a few ideas of what I'd like to do with these next and one is I want to try and utilize the fire scene and create essentially a neon outline of a fire at floor level and put a fire surround around it which I think could look really really fun and be an interactive smart neon fire. But in all seriousness, the possibility is endless with this thing, limited only by your imagination. And they do it in two colors as well, one with a white surround and one with a black, but it's the quality of the lighting that's worth really talking about. It's just really well diffused. And do you know what? Without actually having a good long look at it, it would fool almost all people into thinking that this is actually neon tubing. That's how good this thing looks in person. And if neon is the style that you're going for, these things are kind of a no-brainer. If we were to compare the Govi Neon Rope Lights 2 to an actual neon signage, it's quite clear who the winner is. Let's say you're an e-girl streaming on Twitch and you want a custom neon sign behind you depicting your logo or brand image. To get a custom neon sign of a similar size that one of these could make, it'll cost you about £300 at least. Now the longest Govi Neon Rope Light will do is 5 meters, and that costs just £100 and that's before any discounts and the shorter at 3 meters costs 80 quid, which is an excellent value in its own right and especially so considering that they offer more flexibility in enabling you to create your own designs and you can reuse the rope lights to change designs whenever needed. So the upfront price is a huge difference and the customizability is better. But you've also got to take into account that neon signs typically last a lot less time than LEDs inside Govi lighting. And there's a further consideration to make, and that's that you're not supposed to leave neon tubing on because it can get super hot and pose a bit of a fire hazard. Not to mention easily broken. The Govi neon rope lights will last longer, and because the material is rubberized on the outer section, it means that you would really need to try hard to actually break one. And the smart control and integration with things like Matter and Alexa and other smart home systems, it's above and beyond anything that a neon sign could provide, which are often stock as a single color and are limited to only on-off smart control if you're lucky. Otherwise, you'll need to pay for a smart plug too. But most importantly, the Govi Neon Rope Light 2 costs about half the price of neon lights that actually run in respect to their energy consumption. And that's on average. These can be a lot more efficient if you wanted them to be. Like I said, it's almost no brainer as a better alternative to neon signage. But although these are miles better than neon signs and have some incredible new functionality and upgrades from the previous generation, there are a few things that I would love to see improved as always. 
Thankfully, from a hardware standpoint, these are top notch. There's very little for me to criticize. Perhaps the only thing would be if they included a stronger mounting option. With the included clips, it's kind of difficult to make really tight turns, especially if you're using the 3M on the back of the strips to stick them. We just couldn't seem to make them stick properly, and that's possibly down to the material of the wall. But thankfully, the clips also can be screwed into the wall for a stronger mounting option, which we have to do. Now, I had a quick Google around and managed to find some 3D models of clips designed by users with the Govi neon lights, which provide more angle options than the included set. So if you've got access to a 3D printer, then these could be really useful. And if not, I'm sure there's someone on Etsy that could print a set for you. But by using a third party option, you might be able to create a more accurate image of whatever custom shape you want by creating stronger joins and stronger angles. And on the subject of getting the shape right, although the guides in the app are good, I think they've got the opportunity to make it even easier here. When you go into the shape guides, all it gives you are an example of what it will look like along with the markings of where to place the clips. What would have been really cool is if you could put your phone on a tripod and it essentially act as an AR viewer to show you where to put the pieces using the camera essentially to overlay it as a live image viewfinder. This way, you could essentially have two people, one behind the camera, directing someone in front of the camera, where to place the mounts on the wall for a perfectly accurate image. This would remove some of the guesswork when it comes to working out the size and distance that you should place the mounting clips. Hey, hold on a minute, that would be a good use for the Apple Vision Pro, or even the Quest 3 for that matter. You could make an app that would literally show you in mixed reality where to place the clips and shape. Hmm. Other than those two little things, there's not much I think they could improve on here. Thing is, they've brought the feature out that I know a lot of people have been asking for, including myself for quite some time, and that's the mapping functionality. And I'm hoping this is just the start because I'd love to see this type of tech make its way to their other product lineup, especially their Christmas tree lights. And if they manage to keep the price low, like they have done with the neon rope lights too, I think they'd be onto a real winner, just like they are with these things, because they are bloody great. So if you're watching this, Govi, you've got 278 days until Christmas to get that sorted. If you enjoyed today's episode, don't forget to hit that thumbs up and that subscribe button. And remember to give Brian a mark out of 10 in the comments below. If you give him below a five, he gets a day's wages deducted. So if everyone can score him terribly, you'll end up in perpetual servitude to the Studio Reviews Country Club, and that would be greatly appreciated. If you want to see any other episodes on Govi Tech, I've covered a fair few towards the end of last year, so do go and check them out. But other than that, guys, thank you very much for joining, and I'll see you back for another episode of Studio Reviews soon.